Hey, Banjophobic here. Uh, glad to be back making another setup tips and tricks video. It's been a pretty good while since I've had a chance to make a video with uh, COVID and everything going on. Uh, all our lives have been kind of shaken up out of our routine. But uh, the shop's been extremely busy, which I'm thankful for, so I, I really haven't had time or the energy to make a video lately, but I'm kind of caught up in the shop. Uh, I had a little downtime today and I thought I would make another video. This is a topic that I was going to cover before all this craziness happened. So I decided to go ahead and go forth with the idea. Uh, we have talked about other aspects of bluegrass banjo setup in some of the other videos. So I thought I would make this one talking about tone ring fit. And I'm going to assume you guys know pretty much the basic parts of the banjo. The heart of a bluegrass style banjo is the rim, the wooden rim. Typically there are three plies of maple, but there are other wood choices and block rims. The tone ring, which is, you know, the big metal tone producing element there, and then the flange, which uh, would fit on this lip here. So let's just talk about tone ring fit today. Uh, modern banjo setup as far as the tone ring goes, involves a, what we call a slip fit. Now back in the late 60s, 70s, into the early 80s, tighter was better, excuse the air quotes. <laughs> so they would fit everything, the, the tone ring and the flange and the rim were just squeezed together excessively tight because in those days, for a lot of reasons which I won't get into, some of it's speculation, some of it's based on the quality of the instruments and what people were listening to at the time. There's a lot of reasons why they thought tighter was better, but if you look back in the pre-war period uh, and take some of those pre-war banjos apart, uh, everything wasn't fit that excessively tight. Now things can become tight over time, which is something else we're going to talk about in this video, but let's just talk about the basic uh, parameters of a good modern fit. And again, we're going for what's called the slip fit, not that super tight fit from the 70s. If you like that fit, that's pretty easy to achieve. This is a little harder to, to keep right, the slip fit is. So the, the tone ring itself has two surfaces that may contact the wood rim. You have the skirt, which is this outer portion. It has a lip, obviously. And then inside the ring, you have this, what I call the load-bearing lip of the tone ring, the bead of the tone ring, and a modern 20-hole flathead or a solid uh, flathead ring is fashioned after a uh, pre-war ring so everybody's copying that you know aesthetic and the, the wood rim is machined you see it has a lip here and actually a flat surface here so when the banjo is put together ideally what you want to happen with this classic type of slip fit setup is the inner portion of the tone ring this upper load bearing surface would rest completely flush all the way around the rim. If there's a small gap here at the skirt, that's okay because that's mainly a visual. Some people when they set up banjos try to aim for having both inner and outer lips set on the flange exactly the same. That's okay, you know, if you can manage to do that. But having a gap here is not a bad thing. Now, uh, tone rings come in two varieties in the flathead style. 20 hole and no hole, but when you're talking about the dimensions of the ring, there are two major varieties. You have what's long, what's called long skirt, and I'm exaggerating with my finger. The skirt would be, you know, a few thousandths longer, and regular, or what's referred to as short skirt. This is a short skirt ring, uh, but this rim was actually turned for a different tone ring. Now, not all modern flathead tone rings have exactly the same dimensions, which means Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll purchase one of these name brand rings and they're all great. There's a lot of different great rings being made today. And you'll have a rim that's turned for one modern ring and you decide to switch rings and you want to buy another ring. The ring may or may not be a drop-in fit, which means you may can just drop it in the banjo and it fits perfectly. Win, win, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> but if not, some wood maybe have, have to be removed uh, from the rim and if it's uh, going from a long skirt to a short skirt or vice versa you might have to alter this lip. Now back in the 80s and sometimes 
I've seen banjos in the 90s too. There was a, a guy who I won't mention had an idea called the uh, slip, I'm sorry, the uh, tone bell system. Get my terms mixed up. And basically the tone bell system would look kind of like what I'm doing with my finger here. I'm exaggerating. You see this, this gap here, no gap. He would actually remove wood from the top of the rim with a file or uh, with a router to allow the tone ring basically to set up in the air and have an air gap on here. And that brightens the tone. Uh, I've heard some players say that that increased their volume, but I don't really think that's true. I think there's just a confirmational bias going on there. But if they, if they like it, that's okay. But what I do recommend if anybody wants to experiment with the tone bell system is to remove your factory or stock rim and buy another rim, have it turned for your flange, and then do your experimentation on that. Don't take a file or a router and start ruining your pre-war Gibson rim or your whatever your banjo, your modern Huber banjo. Don't, don't modify the rim for the tone bell. Get a different rim. So, what is a slip fit? Well, a slip fit, if you could get the ideal slip fit, would be that you could turn the rim over and gravity would slowly, I mean, I'm holding it with my fingers, would slowly pull it off. You may actually have to, you know, jiggle the rim a little bit. But there would be enough friction between these two mating surfaces that, it wouldn't fall immediately off. Okay, ideally that would be, you know, the thing to shoot for, but guess what? These wooden rims, I don't care what style of wood rim you have, block moves less than three ply. But any rim, because it's a natural material wood, is going to react with the environment. There are stresses inside the wood, the grain, moisture content, all kinds of things can cause the rim to not stay perfectly round. In fact, it will never stay perfectly round. Some stay closer to round than others. Some really move a lot. So if you get this friction slip fit where, you know, the, the tone ring is pretty snug, but it can be removed, and if you don't use gravity, you can take your hand and you might have to kind of pull just a little bit, you know, to get it to come off. Now, this tone ring is fit so that I can just basically remove it no problem whatsoever. I don't need gravity. I don't need to use any muscle power. It just comes right off. There's actually enough of a slip so that, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the tone ring will move just a, maybe 10, 12 thousandths either way. And the reason I prefer this is for customers who live in a different part of the country. If you live in a humid climate, a lot of humidity, or maybe your home is really you know, high in humidity for whatever reason, this rim is going to swell with higher moisture content and that perfect slip fit that you had before where you know it takes a little bit of pressure to remove it will become too tight and if the rim moves a lot it could wedge itself on there. I've had you know pot assemblies that I had to actually heat the ring to get it off because the rim had moved so much and you can't predict how any one rim will move as opposed to another. All right, now here's another aspect of this that's pretty critical. Let's see if I can find a little, I had a little piece of paper here. Um, if you uh, have the tone ring fit to the uh, rim of the banjo where there is a nice amount of clearance and you're pretty sure that it's not going to tighten up on you, the next critical area of tone you have to look out for is this upper bearing surface. Now, unless, again, you like that tone bell system where there's a gap underneath the tone ring and rim, if you're going for that classic sound and that classic setup, you could use a, a, a dollar bill. One of my mentors, Clarence Hall, used to take a dollar bill, which he had measured with a caliper. But a thin sheet of paper will work. If you have some super thin feeler gauges, you can use this too. What you want to do is put your gauge or your piece of paper between the rim and uh, the tone ring at this bearing surface and squeeze and remember now when you put the banjo together with a tension hoop and the hooks and nuts they're going to supply the force the, the plastic banjo head is going to pull everything really tightly together you should not be able to remove that paper you can pull now if it does this now I'm squeezing really hard with my left hand right now you can see that there is actually a gap 
between these two. I should not be able to either remove this paper or move it at all if this fit is correct here. So what would happen if I wanted to use this tone ring on this rim, I would have to remove a little bit of wood here because I have a good, really loose slip fit on the circumference of the rim, but I need to remove just a few thousandths here, the skirt area, to allow the whole tone ring to seat further because what's happening is the tone ring is hitting here before here and it's holding the tone ring up. So it's actually giving me kind of a slight tone bell system what we described earlier. So those are the critical areas that you want to look for and that's what's meant basically by tone ring fit. Now I have another pot assembly here that will show you an arch top. This is an arch top banjo from the 70's and you can tell an arch top tone ring, a typical arch top, because there are different varieties of these. This is a hold but there are some with no holes. Uh, they have a, a rim. This is a 70s banjo, so it has a you know 12 ply rim, not 3 ply. But you can see it has a flat bearing surface on top, and it has a lip machine. And this tone ring also has a skirt, and it has an upper surface inside. But it's made differently than a flathead. But the premise is still the same. And when you put this together, you don't want it excessively tight, and you want to make sure this portion seats before this for that classic kind of fit. Now I have discovered from working on literally thousands of banjos in my life that the fit of an arch top is not cr quite as critical to the overall tone and response of the instrument as the flathead. The flathead ring tends to be a little more finicky about tone ring fit. You can have a little gap here and it's not the worst thing in the world and it can be fit a little tightly and it's not the worst thing. Of course you don't want excessive things happening on either one of these two styles of tone ring banjos, but just to show you the difference between the arch top. So um, there you have it, that's basically what's happening and again if you see a banjo from the 70's and everything just fits super tight together, I mean they've just compressed everything and they use a really thin bridge, head tensions were really really super high in the 70's compared to today. There's a lot of reasons for that that we won't get into, but this is what kind of what we're going for today, modern times, and it mimics what was happening with banjos in the 30s that I had discovered from working on a lot of pre-war banjos uh, and seeing them worked on by other repair guys and talking to them about it. Uh, the classic slip fit is kind of what most setup people are aiming for. So there you go. Hope it was informative and make you uh, a little more knowledgeable about all this stuff. So if you're thinking about changing tone rings or just want to have discussions with other players on online forums or in real life about tone ring fit, maybe you'll know a little more about it now. Thanks for watching.